All right, fighthype.com. Sean Zatel here at the Mickey Bay residence. Beautiful home. Uh, hard, hard earned by a, a hell of a career. Former lightweight champion of the world, Mickey Bay. And, and Mick, man, was watching Top Rank just posted your, your 10 round split decision fight with George Cambosis. And while watching the fight, I thought there's nobody in the world who could probably break down this Cambosis Haney fight better than you. You fought Cambosis and trained, helped train Devin for multiple fights. So had to come to the place man how, how first off man you know Devin's going over there with without you without Bill without uh Davison how, how do you think that's gonna affect fight night man uh I'm gonna be honest man I'm, I'm confident in, in Devin man he's just a different dude he uh he's real mature for his age a lot of guys honestly I would if it was 99 percent of fighters you know I would probably tell them don't do it but Dev is in that, you know, he that one percent kind of guy that um, is not gonna bother him. You know, if you place wherever you place a ring, you know, I don't care if you put it up in space. <laughs> you know, he gonna do he gonna do the same thing uh, that he'd do anywhere. You know, I, I, honestly, I think it'd be better for him because I think that he gonna have some animosity, but he he gonna know how to channel it. It's not gonna be like going in fighting off anger, but he got a chip on his shoulder because. I think it's kind of crazy that, uh, you know, a lot of the people didn't get to come over, and mm -hmm. you know, especially his dad. Like, there's no way, you know, I don't know how long he knew it or whatever. You know, I think that that was kind of, but it is what it is. Um, but Dev been preparing for this since he was a kid. So his maturity and his confidence and his smarts, you know, um, he'd, do, he'd do the same thing that he had done if, you know, if... You know, it could be just him in the corner. You could pour him some water. He's gonna do the same thing. <laughs> Is that kind of kind of how Floyd was, right? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. yeah. I know he. You know, he's young, but like I say, he's very mature. Like boxing is the center of his life. Like everything goes around boxing. It's nothing more. That's the that's his comfort zone. It's nothing more in the world that he's where he's comfortable than the ring. Nothing at all. Not even being at home in the kitchen or this or that the ring is where his comfort zone is and all of that is what makes him part of that one percent oh and not the, he's yeah. different than he's different than even i only think it's a handful of fighters that got his work ethic his focus his discipline it's only a few you know like believe me even i'm not talking about talent i'm saying all around like you know Devin is an all-around throwback fighter you know, uh, speaking of natural talent, right? Sometimes, usually, when we talk about natural talent, it's about speed or power, strength. But does does Devin have a natural talent in terms of intelligence as a fighter, and and you know, in making adjustments? Well, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Dev is not. I wouldn't consider him like a natural talent. He is as far as his athletic ability, but his is more taught. Like he's that's why he's so good because his dad put together all the right pieces since he was a kid, since he was young, you know, when they when they came to Vegas, you know, uh, I saw when Devin first came here, we was actually training at the same gym, but he would train later. And, and, and they put together a smart plan to link up with the Mayweathers that early, you know, and you know, I had already been training with them. So dad started telling me about him, maybe, he was probably only boxing a few weeks or a month. And they was like, man, you got to check this little kid out that we got. He's only seven or eight years old. And they were just telling me, like, how good he was and stuff. And they, you know, would show me. And then when I seen him in person, I'm like, man, there's something about him. You know, his fire, that fire that he got in him uh, is different. And he just rapidly improved. So, to me, he was taught from the beginning the right way. So, to me, he got a head start on a lot of fighters. Like, a lot of guys start off. Like to me, what made Floyd such a great fighter, just bringing it up, because Devin had the same schooling, and I come from that same schooling as well. Devin had it from the very beginning, just like Floyd had it. So think about it, Floyd never got to learn anything wrong. When you think about it, most dudes gotta adjust and build think, bad habits. Think, yeah, think about it. Floyd, dad was, he told me he was training him in the crib, literally, when he was two months old and a month old, he would grab his hands 
and he would have him throwing punches with his hands and everything like so when you think about it it was nothing that he had to unlearn like most people like most people can be a real good amateur but they when they turn pro they got to get that pro trainer and get some more seasoning and stuff you know not all the time but most of the time no but, right right but when you talk about the best what i consider the best this is no offense floyd roger floyd senior back in the day and roger is the best in this era of boxing in the last 20 30 years hands down like you know in the exception of a couple other trainers that you know is real but i'm saying with them it's like they, they it was destined to me so with that being said by Devin having that school in front of the beginning, he had a, a lot of other good trainers too, but you could look, watch him fight and see where most of it came from. So uh, by being around that and his dad soaking it up and being around it and just putting him, putting that investment in his son, kind of like Serena Williams' dad did. And you know, you get to Michael Jordan's dad, you know, putting that, I mean, he struck gold. Like he, he, he hit the lottery, like it paid off. So. To me, with Devin, it was more talk. Like, he got natural gifts. Like, he's one of the best conditioned athletes I've ever seen. Like, mm -hmm. his condition is, you saw it. Like, I mean, his, I've never seen him tired, ever. I, I mean, this cat, that's why I'm confident with him over there. I'm like, man, Cambosis, you know, I'm sure we're going to get into that a little later. But I'll fully break everything down. But with Devin, I never, and I'm going to be real with you, I've never seen him lose one sparring round in the last few years I've been working with him. I didn't see him lose one round. Now, we talking about probably out of a 1,000 rounds, seven, 800 rounds, 500 rounds, i never seen him lose one round in sparring. And he's I've been there alongside you for a lot of them, and I, I'll, I'll attest Think to it. it. I'll attest to you're right, round, though. Like, I mean, so to me, his, it, it's what he was taught. He was taught the right way from the beginning. And even mentally, it, everything everything is synced perfect. Like, he was trained mentally. He got the, di he got the discipline. Even from his dad, he didn't grow up in, the, in really, he didn't have that. You know, he kind of switched over from the Bay, which is they got a good uh, boxing. They got a good boxing um background in the bay area you know mm -hmm. you look at andre ward and some of the throwback robert fighters. guerrero and yeah you look at yeah. Benito. you look at since i was little they had always had good fight good skilled fighters so it's the difference between good fighters and how they fought they always had good crafty skilled fighters and good trainers like the virgil hunters and you know the bobby warrens if you look at the old school cats that brought that you know, um, I'm close to a lot of people from the Bay and got family there, so they got a lot of good lineage. And then you take that Midwest style, which is, you know, uh, it's different. It's hard to, you know, especially when it comes to skills. You know, I know you remember Roger always talking about you. People won't, wouldn't understand until they go there and you see dudes come off the streets and look as slick as Pernell Whitaker that didn't, <laughs> don't, didn't even train. Is because, like I said, a lot of guys, we got a lot of good teachers around these certain areas, and Devin soaked that game up. He got that. He that he been getting that since he was seven. It's a difference what a lot of fighters go through. This trainer, that trainer, that trainer. Now Devin have went through trainers, but all of them were all of it was strategic. So yeah. so he's more. It's more talk. He got some natural abilities and natural talent, but it's more talk. He's not like a Roy Jones. That just got that freakish, you know. Roy is like a freak. You can't even teach what Roy got, but so I'll say Devin uh, is more like it's more talk. So when he goes over uh, Saturday night and he's fighting overseas for the undisputed titles, he's not just uh, representing the USA, but he's representing a whole lineage and school, a uh, craft that that's been bred out here because. Like you said, not just Floyd and Roger, but Roy. He's worked with Mike McCallum, yourself. Is that right? He, he's he's actually representing a lot. Oh, in this 100%. Fight. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm fighting, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I ain't, since I've been back from Dubai, I ain't turned the TV on. I mean, I'm sitting playing the fight out in my head, and, you know, uh, my whole spirit and being is, is over there with him. Even though I'm here, I mean, I want this fight better than anything. Um but I'm a million percent confident that he's going to win the fight. I mean, like I say, Devin is, is he got everything that it takes. I'm, I'm talking about 
like I say, we just mentioned, I mean, this dude is so competitive on top of all of the skills, the discipline, and the attributes that he has. He's just so competitive that I think that he going to, what he going to do in the ring is going to be, you're not even going to be able to, people worried about the judge and stuff. I'm not, you know, they got neutral judges and everybody is suspecting it, it to be a bad decision, but the eyes is on that. I don't, I think it's going to be fair. And Devin might even stop him. Some, I got a feeling that he gonna hurt this cat. I'm, I don't know if it's gonna be a knockout, but believe me, he gonna he gonna really something's gonna happen in that fight that's gonna shock people. And it, it's stuff that I'm seeing that I'm liking, even physically that I'm looking at Devin like, oh man, okay. I, it's just little stuff that I can see that 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 I'm happy and confident with. Mm, what well, what are some of the things you've been seeing that make you feel that way, Mick? I just look at him and he look, he he's starting to to me he look like he becoming more of a man. Like if you look at his face structure, I'm looking at all of that. He just from the point of months ago, he looking more, he losing the baby face a little bit like that teenage look. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Go go look at his uh interviews and stuff. He's starting to look even he look more chiseled, more like a like you know, you getting that manly look. You know when you in your early 20s, you kind of still coming off that teenage I mean something about it that I some the energy and something that I see and I feel is like that but like, okay like dang you know he he going to up why he going I'm telling you he going to up some 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 wicked going to happen on the, in that fight believe me well since you brought it up first is and you mentioned you you see him hurting him you know Cambosis likes to fight with that lead hand by yeah. his his waist do you think Maybe that it's the right hand coming crashing down over that low left at some point. Can both, you know, Devin's long catching him, pulling out. Or so, how, how do you see, if Devin does hurt him, how do you see it going down? Well, this is what I think. Cambosis, his main game plan, because think about it, no matter what he say or how, because, all right, this, this, is, this is what Cambosis, all right, great condition athlete. Every, you know, even we fought. I knew I was older. I'm coming off a long layoff. I wasn't in top tier 10 round shape. Like, you know, that's why that little flash knocked down the last round. My body, I wasn't even, I was fatigued probably in the seventh, eighth round. It was just my experience and my knowledge. Other than that, I was a three, three, I was about a three out of a 10 or a four out of a 10. And I knew that what I can, I knew what I seen and how, you know, yeah, I got more experience. But if you put, if you put a younger guy like Devin that know the same stuff I know, and he could do put he he got more output, he been busy. I mean, I don't see Cambosis being able to even you he see Cambosis, his main thing is heart, determination, great conditioning. He does have speed and power, but he 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 he, he like a crap shooting fighter. He just like he'll what he gonna try to do nine times nine times out of ten he gonna try to punch with Devin, you know he gonna try to like when Devin punch he gonna just swing. It's not gonna be like he's not real accurate. Like Cambosis will throw a three punch combination just hoping to land one. Like he gonna throw two or three hoping to get that one money punch off, which would be either more more than likely on the right hand side like you say yeah he carried that left low but he trying to bait you into that overhand or the uppercut so right like he did to right yeah oh. now see with Devin he he got it all he got the reflexes he got the defense he got the know-how it's, it's intentional it's not like see when you look at Cambosis you can tell I could tell I mean we talked after our fight and he was asking me like why he couldn't hit me and blah 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 and stuff and was kind of like you know so I can tell that he learned a lot from our fight and he picked up some things like moving a certain way, trying to use the shoulder a little bit, little things. But what he got to realize that we come from that. Devin comes from that. Like, so the stuff that I see Cambosa's doing and even his, in his training, this is stuff that you could tell they got from Roger and Floyd Mayweather Sr., which is happening to me with 90 some percent or a big percentage of boxing. You could tell guys is YouTube and Roger and Floyd Mayweather Sr. a lot. But it's a difference in getting it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Like I say, Devin been getting this since he was seven. So this stuff that he doing is not, he not trying to mimic Floyd. People could say, no, he was taught the same things since he was little. So his, the things that he's doing is more intentional. Cambosis is, a, he's a great athlete as well, but 
his is more like he not one thing about him he a crazy dude but in a good way i ain't going i ain't saying crazy like in a in a in a you get what i'm saying as a fighter he like got that balls. Gotti mentality he yeah. got a lot of balls mm -hmm. Moses, so he could care less if you hit him with a bat his mentality is already fixed like whatever happened i'm walking through it and this is what i'm gonna do but he is underestimating Devin because he looking at him as a kid. He like, oh man, this little kid, he ain't gonna be able to do this. He not gonna be able to do that. But the thing is, is, is what Cambosis is, a lot of the stuff that he even lent on Tiafimo, Tiafimo wasn't thinking. Tiafimo was fighting off emotions. I mean, the fight was already damn near. You was there when we did that, when I ran into him, right? Yeah. As soon yep. as I left, I told Dev like, man, you might be right. Cambosis might get him because his he was kind of he was underestimating Tiafimo and this he was he went in there and fought off emotions and he didn't think he everything went out the window and then when he got dropped in the first round I mean that so to me I see the same mentality in this fight I see Cambosis didn't turn into to Tiafimo exactly so I'm like man he's he seemed a little it's the difference with being confident and overconfident. Like to me, he seemed a little too overconfident. Like he fighting, a, he fighting a thinking fighter that can do to me everything better than him. Like you know, yeah, you 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 can probably give certain things. Like you know, he liked to fight more than Devin. Like he like, but Devin can fight. He just knows when to do it and when not to do it. And I'm sure this fight. He'll be at a chance to get in there with some experienced guys like Gamboa and Linares. No matter what you want to, and JoJo Diaz. No matter what you want to say, them three world champions, they got a heck of a. They've been boxing longer than he been born, especially Gamboa and Linares. It to take a young 21, 22 year old and put him in the ring with guys like that is a hard task. Like it's not everybody was saying, oh, who did he fight? All right, put another, put a, put another 21, 22 year old in there with. With guys that been boxing longer than literally longer than he been born, that's like that's a gamble in itself. But Devin is the kind of guy that uh, take any challenge possible, and he showed it this fight. Like, I've been saying it, and people are oh, you just being biased because you train him and this your guy and this and that. Nah, I was dead serious. Like this dude just insanely uh, competitive. Like this when it come to jogging. Anything he ain't gonna let you beat him in the run or none of that. Like he just a super competitive dude. So Cambosis, that's what he kind of banks on is is outwilling you and out. He he's real competitive. He uh, he he want to outwill you and, and and win off of conditioning. Yeah, he got speed. He got speed and he got some attributes. But like I say, it's more. He doesn't. It's not like set up with intention behind it. Like it's not like he he. I don't see him being. He can't play the chess game with Devin. Yeah. So he gonna really fight like, oh, when Devin swing, I'ma swing and try to catch him. But at the end of the day, you could fall short on that end. That's what he. I guarantee you, that's what he's banking on is outworking Devin, and and and, and trying to swing and and trade. He wanna he wanna trade with Devin basically, because he's not. Devin is a sharpshooter. Cambosis is not a real straight puncher. He's a slick boxer, real good time. I can't take nothing away from him. Right hand got straighter after he fought you. Like, like, like he learned some things. And, yeah, yeah, but it's kind of, <laughs> to be honest, it's more looping, though. Like, even when he dropped uh, T.O. T.O. is looping. Nah, that can be uh, awkward, more awkward than a straight punch. But, you know, but to he can't he can't play that crapshoot game on Devin. Like, it, you know, you can, but you got to realize this kid is not getting tired. Like, he, Tiafimo was tired late. I was tired late. Devin ain't getting tired. This, this kid is young and in tip-top shape. And he got one of the best gas tanks in the business, hands down. If not the number one gas tank. Like, he don't, I've never seen Devin tired before. I mean, you've been in the gym. Mm -hmm. I mean, this dude, you have to pull him out the ring. I mean, he could spar probably 20 rounds and, and look the same in the 20th round as the first round and won't give you one round. Like, I mean... Like I say, I haven't seen Devin lose one round of sparring in years. Is uh, is, do you ever feel like we haven't fully seen the Devin we've seen in sparring on Fight Night? Yeah, there's definitely. things he could bring out that we haven't oh, seen absolutely, yet. Absolutely, because yeah. I mean, 
like you and I know, people didn't even know when he fought him, boy, he had a broke hand. Right. So, you know, he pretty, he fought him with one hand, but um, he was confident enough to go in there and win against a, a fighter just that experienced. Um, but I think all of those things, all of those things helped him for this fight night. Sometimes you don't know why you going through what you're going through until that night comes. And, you know, all of the going to Mexico, you know, his first, a lot of his first couple handfuls of fights was in Mexico in foreign territory. Um, you don't know who you fighting. You just a kid going on there fighting. You, you know, those guys got three records sometime. So you don't <laughs> even know who you fighting, to be honest with you. So all of that and all the sparring and all of the, I mean, he'd have been in there with everybody. He in Vegas, the capital of boxing. Yeah, uh, Cambosis came over. Yeah, he just sparred with Manny Pacquiao, this and that. That's cool, but Devin been doing this since he was seven. That was a strategic move to move to the capital of boxing. You know, his dad brought him out here. You know, they came from the Bay to come to Vegas to the capital. And the intention, I'm sure, was let's get with the Mayweathers. This is where it's at. Early. This is before it was mainstream to where now you see everybody trying to copy him, but it's right. a difference. Working with them back then uh, was a, it's a major difference, and I, I think that Devin got a head start just from from getting all of that kind of game at an early and just watching Floyd and all the fighters he's been watching. I mean, this was like a it was a plan and a blueprint to this. This wasn't like a it just so happened. It was in the stars that it happened. Like I mean, but this was intentional. Mick, you talked about you said Cambosis is tough, but he does have speed. Who's who's the faster fighter? Who's the more you know athletically gifted, speedier guy, Devin? Well, or, they both fast, but Devin mm -hmm. got better timing. See that, like when I fought him, as rusty as I was, I had to, I had better timing than Ken Bosa's. He had more, you know, he was in a way better shape. He was a younger guy, but that was a weakness that I seen. Like me and Devin I already been talking about this fight even before it came about. That's what's crazy, cause he like, coach, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the revenge for you. <laughs> one day and I'm like yeah that'd be funny that'd be and, and it is crazy because now it's here uh, but I think that uh, Devin got better timing and Devin got more in his arsenal like he could do a, he could do everything he could do a lot like people think that you can't punch because you don't have one punch knockout power I mean uh, most of the greatest fighters of all time didn't have one not punch knockout power so you know, Devin, Devin is, 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 is mature. And haven't these guys, Mick, Linares and Diaz, Gamboa too, kind of fought with the, well, I mean, Diaz had some good rounds, but fought with the handcuffs on. They kept their, they, they were very cognizant right. of what was coming back, keeping their hands up. And like you said, Cambosa is going to be more willing to exchange. Doesn't that give Devin more of a chance to hurt the guy as opposed to the guys yeah. who were keeping their hands oh, at home and hundred percent right. because look I look at it like this to me Cambosis is similar to like a, a orthodox version of Manny Pacquiao that's his go-to style like he you can see the influence and you can see the influence in him training with him for so many years but it's some flaws in that it's some flaws in that and 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 Devin exploited it. it's some flaws as far as the you know, some things that, of course, I'm telling well, that, Devin. Well, well, Manny had problems with counterpunching with that style. Yeah, Manny was even like a, uh, he was, I mean, Manny is Manny, so great. But he still wasn't a, he still really wasn't like a, Manny was so nice that he could just throw six, seven punches and if one get in, but a lot of times his hands and his feet wasn't together. That's how Marquez dropped him because he's so fast that he didn't have to, step with every punch he could just let that clip go and and, and crap shoot all right i'm about to throw a five piece let one get in it's over with that that's his thing so i i, I noticed that cambosis is kind of like that like he you know he just you could see it in his eyes they wide open and he just got that oh i just want to he got that you know kind of that killer instinct that manny got but when you fighting the dudes that's sharp and that's a good counter puncher but at the same time we not looking to Devin ain't just looking to counter punch. He gonna be on the lead, but his punches is sharp. They real sharp, so you're not gonna really be able to. You know, it ain't gonna be no no foot in the sand to where like all right, 
when you punch in his feet knocked CT a female feet was stuck in the concrete but that's because he was overconfident. His plan was to go in and straight go for the knockout. And once you revert, it's hard to change that once you go into a fight. It's kind of hard to go from going for a knockout to all of a sudden boxing. And that's why I took, you know, it took him so many rounds just to get, start fighting more intelligent, Tiafimo. And he did drop him late because Tiafimo, I mean, Cambosa does got that you know, Toro Gotti type spirit in him, you know. If you look at where he's from, you know, the Spartan mentality and all of that. But at the same time, when you look at what Devin came up under, the teachings that he came up under, you know, is to me the best stuff in history. Like, mm -hmm. literally, I mean, if you look at people, you know, his thing is, all right, Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, that's cool. Manny had a great trainer, Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach's teachers came from Eddie the Midwest. Fudge. Right. But that's who taught Big Floyd is his best friend. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Dale Williams is his, uh, his, his best friend. Eddie Futch's best friend. Yeah. yeah, so they all grew up in Ohio and Michigan. So them teachers, that's where it come from. Uh, you know, but Manny didn't really use a lot of that. But I'm saying he he came from that. Uh, you know, Freddie Roach is a good teacher and everything. Right. So, but but Devin, um, but Cambosas, that's like his go to thing is the Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao. That's cool, but Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> Manny Pacquiao. Man, you know, we see what happened, but uh. But Devin is Devin, man. Devin got stuff in him that that's going it's, it's going to cause some trouble for Cambosas because he's not going to be easy to hit like he might think. You know, it's a difference when you get in there. You could watch and see something all day, but it's a difference when you get in there and say, man, this dude, because it's intentional. Devin knows what to do up here. It's not a, it's not a, see, Cambosas not going to be able to to even beat him here mentally. He not gonna beat him there. When I say mentally, don't mean that. Cambosa is real mentally tough, but his is more, if you was to go in his brain, you'd see two dragons blowing out, blowing out fire. That's how he think. If you go in Devin's brain, it's gonna be more of a road map. It's gonna be more of a, uh, it's gonna be a chessboard. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be like a blueprint. Cause it's all thought out with Cambosas. It's gonna be you go in this brain, passion and heart. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be yeah, like. Yeah. I mean, you gonna see sword. You just gonna see. You gonna hear the Rocky theme playing. Yeah, you gonna yeah, <laughs> but that that's that's. I mean, it's a it's a long it's a long fight in there. Like I don't think that that's the stuff is gonna work. That work in the T of female fight is not gonna work on that. So so I I love that I get to ask you this because if we were in Australia, you would tell me, understandably. I can't talk about the game plan like that. But since I got you in Vegas, and if Devin's watching, kind of what what would be your game plan if Devin does has to do X, Y, and Z to win? Or what what do you say, Mickey? The reason why I'm comfortable saying this is because even if Cambosas watched this, he ain't gonna be able to stop it. It's the week of the fight, and if I'm if, if you're worried about listening to what I'm saying, he got you beat already anyway. So, I mean, I see Devin. Devin punches too straight. Like, all right, one thing, I, Ken Bosas is not really a straight puncher. If you watch him fight, and it's, a lot of it is because of the way he hold his guards. He kind of hold his guards out. Like, he don't really have that, a certain kind of guard to where he could even shoot straight. He can, but if me and you was to, to go outside and race, if I run straight and you curve a little bit, who you think going to get to the stop sign first? The person running straight should exactly. win. Should win, yeah. Exactly. So, but you might be me because I'm unathletic, and you were former world champion. But yeah, but even, like, if we, <laughs> right, even if we had the same speed, like his punch is more curvier. Right now, nah, right. It can, it can, it can get to fighters if they not aware and in, in defense, and they not conscious on their defense. Yeah, it can get, it can get to them. But Devin is gonna be. Very, Devin got different defenses and all that he can go to like, stances and looks. Yeah, and I, like that's how we were taught. Like he was taught that. See that this is stuff people don't know when they watch people like the Mayweather's. They only the only thing that stick out is the pad work and the shoulder roll. It's a million other things that I wouldn't tell you. And you can punch and defend out of each look and stance. Yeah, right. That, Some guys that can only punch out of certain looks. Right. And only defend, Devin got right. a lot of go tos to where he could say, all right. This ain't working. I'm gonna go to that, and this it's in him. Like this is something that he's been doing since he was a kid. So number one, number one, uh, t 
uh, Cambosa's jab a lot, but his jab, Devin's jab is a lot better. Um, he fight more off the front foot, Cambosa's, because he looking to be aggressive. Like, you know, he looking to, when you punch, I'm going to just punch and I'm going to try to come with my assault. Now, he not going to be able to plant as much because Devin's footwork is nasty. Like, he got, his footwork is one of the top tier footwork in the game. That's going to be something different for um, because it's going to be in a way to where it's not running so fans can throw that out the window. It's the difference with hitting and, and not getting hit and putting yourself in position to hit him, step over and get another shot off. You know, Devin is going, he's not going to be able to keep up with Devin's footwork. His footwork is super fast. Like his it's like abnormal. It's crazy. Like it's it's fast. Like on another level to where it's something you can't really prepare for, because it's nobody that he could have possibly sparred to get him ready for Devin's footwork. Like I said, another thing is conscious too. It's not running and it's not him just moving around. But one thing about it is Devin could throw. Devin throws good combinations and they sharp. So it's just a, it's a lot of things that that can bolsters. Yeah, I know his plan is to. Go to Devin, try to punch with him. When he punch, you punch and try to hurt him. But when that don't happen, then what? When you figure out that 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 don't work, what can you do? What can you do to come out with the win? You can't outbox Devin. If your only game plan is to hurt or stop Devin, that ain't gonna happen. Cause when you land one punch, it ain't gonna land again. You might get a it's boxing. He might land a plus punch here or there. But guess what? Devin was taught to know what defense to go into after that so it's like okay he trying to he trying to throw this all right i got him i'm gonna take that away from him you know the school and that that we come from is to take away all of the guy's weapons not only to do what you do but to take his weapons away cambosas really don't know how to do that he's an offensive fighter he he's not a fighter that can take away what Devin can do his thing, his 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 way of taking it away is putting us the offensive assault on. Oh, I'm a hurt him. I'm gonna do this. But when that don't work, how many more go tos do you have? Devin got, uh, Devin got handfuls of them to where he he can go into this. He can go into that. He can go into this. He can go into that. Okay, he trying to land overhand. I know what to do. I know which way to move. I know how to catch it. I know how to get up on. I know how to do what I need to do. Is and it's automatic. It's clockwork. So um, because you you slowed him down and forced him into a chess match. Yeah. He so he couldn't do that he, he, fight the oh, way. Oh yeah, he couldn't yeah. do it. He had to think. And so you think that would be the same thing with Haynes? He had to think with me. Right. Like my thing is it. Are right, you got to do that was ten years older than him. I ain't fighting three and a half years. I've trained a month cold turkey and fought a, a a killer like that. You know this ain't taking nothing away. It's a great fight. Everybody need to tune in because it's a heck of a fight. He got the all the belts for a reason, but. Like me and Devin always talked about, like just imagine the gas you got in the youth that you got. Like I was ring, I was ring rusty as hell. Like yeah, you can't really tell if you watch, but I felt it. I it was it was so much stuff that I saw I could have did, but I couldn't react to it because I had to be smart. I knew he was trying to clip me and knock me out, so I'm like, dang, I, my my I wasn't all the way there at all. I was rusty as hell for me to even come off of that. Lay off and fight a dude like that, but you know it is what it is. But I'm like, um, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm like, man, this is kind of easy. Like it wasn't a tough, it wasn't that hard of a fight because I had it up there. Like I got him to do what I wanted him to do. I took a lot of stuff away from him. Now a lot of fighters can't do that. You got to be real smart to be able to do that. Even Tia Fimo, he might have a youth over me. Like I told him when, when we was getting interviewed. He got the youth and he got all of that, but he don't. You don't have the smarts and you can't think like me and don't have the experience I got. I've been boxing longer than he been born. I knew how to take certain stuff away from him and cruise and make him fight to my pace. I wasn't in no real ten round. I, you know, but at the same time, I almost won that fight. Like he beat me by a hair. So with Devin, if you if you gave me seventy percent of his win. That night, his conditioning, oh, it would have been a wrap. Like, it wouldn't even have been a contest. Like, honestly, I think, man, I ain't going to say what. Because I knew one thing about it is he going he, he gonna to have problems too when Devin go to him. 
Cause he not he can't fight going backwards. He yeah, can't fight can. going backwards. No, and I saw that, but I'm like, okay, I can't do this tonight. Well, he was he was stepping back when he caught Tio no, with he that was, right hand. No, he was, he was, but that's because Tia Fimo feet was in the sand. Yeah. When you come on angles and stuff, it's different. Yeah. Now this ain't see, I ain't I ain't gonna take uh, Tia. I mean, Cambosa's ability away because he could do a lot of stuff, but he's so much of a like a, a killer instinct type fighter that sometimes he throw it out the window and he'd just go like forget about that and just start fighting off of his ability and his you know he got athletic, he got a lot of athleticism like so he go in that Manny Pacquiao mode to where like when Manny was fighting Mar Marquez that time he, he I think he dropped Marquez and he was beating mm -hmm. him but mm -hmm. sometimes fighters get they get so overconfident with their speed and power that Dead throw some punches and not even be in position to throw the punch. Like Roley when he fought Tank. All right. Like you just seen him fight Santa Cruz, right? But see, this is your experience coming to play. <laughs> right. You missed the combination and you repeated the same thing. Tank is smart. He downloaded that info and said, when he throw that again, I'm going to throw this. What did he do against Santa Cruz? Did you notice he threw three right hands straight? You can't repeat stuff. If you on throw this right fighters. hand one more time. I'm gonna. And that's Roley did the same thing. Right, right. So th that's what a lot of these, you know, fighters with a lot of experience to do that. Like once something don't work, Devin's smart enough to know I ain't gonna do that again. Like I'm not finna repeat the same thing after he got out of the way of that. Why would I throw it again? You know, there ain't no knock. I'm just making an example because that was the fight last week that yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about that in a minute. And, and I knew yeah. I'm like, okay, this dude threw the same thing. You can't do that against a dude like Tank that's looking to counter you and can punch like that. You can't afford to make mistakes like that on him. So, with a guy like Ken Bosa's, um, like I say, he fight with so much fire and passion. It's a good thing. It can win you 99% of your fights, to be honest with you. But against a guy like Devin, that's that super elite talent and that thinker. And for him having the know-how, he not fighting off of... He not fighting. He know what he doing up here. Everything is strategic. It's not. Devin is young, but I don't think Cambosis realized. He, I'm sure he done his homework. He got to know what he came up under. I mean, Devin, everything that Devin is doing is talk. Like, it's not. It ain't no crap shoot for Devin. He, he don't fight like that. Do you got decision or a stoppage for Devin? What, how do you see him winning the fight? Man, um... I, I think that by Ken Bowles is having that warrior spirit, I, I see Devin beating him in the wide decision. Like, to where people worried about the robbery, I'm not worried about it because Devin, I don't think Devin going to lose rounds like that. Like, you know, he might get, you know, of course the judge might give him a couple sympathy rounds. He at home, he, gonna, he might throw a couple punches, the crowd get loud. You know, he didn't lost five rounds straight, four rounds straight. All right, let's get Ken Bowles to this round, you know. We getting kind of bored because Devin shutting him. He he outboxing him, so we looking away. The judge is looking down. You know, sometimes <laughs> judges don't be geared all the way in all 36 minutes of the fight. Um, you know, I see Devin beating him on a wide, a unanimous decision, really, to be honest. Like, you know, we can't we can't say how the judge is going to score or nothing, but Devin going to make it to where you can't take this fight from him because, like I say, he, he got the conditioning to fight the same from round one to 12. So that's the advantage that he got. Everybody else wasn't able to fight that last quarter of the fight with the same intensity. And that's usually the advantage that Cambosis has. Cambosis is a well conditioned athlete. Like he's like, he got, I mean, he's a great athlete. He don't get tired. But that's one thing that I can say about Devin. Devin doesn't get tired. So that's one advantage that's taken away from uh, Cambosis that he usually comes out on top that ain't gonna happen this time oh, amazing breakdown man